Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements' in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. Be seated, take your Bible, open it up to 1 Timothy. We'll take right off again in the fourth chapter. I think I mentioned previously that, that I uh, was able to talk with, with Tony Cook, uh, one of the best Bible teachers in the land right now. Uh, and by the way, uh, you'll have a great opportunity this weekend uh, to, to just have one of the uh, really truthfully premier uh, exhorters uh, and, and Bible teachers uh, in Ray Bench. So uh, men, do not miss breakfast on Saturday. Uh, it's a great opportunity for you. He's doing some helps ministry work for us uh, on Sunday uh, after service and be here and stay a little, uh, a little while after service. That is preaching Sunday morning. Amen. Praise God. So, and we're, we're putting him to work otherwise. I'm not going to tell you how. That's a surprise. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that later, but we're going to put him to work even doing some other special things for us. But uh, I was able to, thank you, I was able to, to uh, talk, with, talk with Tony Cook about this, about this verse, verse 6. And see, this is exactly what Peter said in the first two verses of his second letter. Uh, that we looked at. This is exactly what he said. He said, if you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, put the brethren in remembrance of these things, you're a good minister. You put the brethren in remembrance of these things, you're a good minister. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. The words of faith and of good doctrine, the words of faith and the words of good doctrine, whereunto you have obtained but refuse vain, profane, wives, old wives' fables, and exercise yourself rather to godliness, for bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable in all things. Now just going back to verse 6 again, please remember uh, as a faith uh, person, Of course, every Christian ought to be faith, but there's just been more emphasis put on the subject of faith, the Bible truth uh, about faith, what faith is, how faith works, how to turn your faith loose, that everyone has a measure of faith, that faith can grow, that faith's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, and and uh, the Thessalon Thessalonican church, the church of Thessalonia, they were told your faith grows exceedingly. Uh, Jesus said, uh, not being weak in faith, but rather being strong in faith. Uh, Jesus said, where is your faith? Uh, Jesus said, I've not seen so great a faith. Uh, and, and, and so we, we can do a lot of teaching on faith. You can't get saved without faith. For by grace you're saved through faith. You can't please God without faith. Because, because our Bible says in, in Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith it's impossible to please God. The prayer of faith will save the sick. We having the same spirit of faith, even as it is written, 2 Corinthians 4, 13, I believe therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. And it's sad to look around and see ministries that used to call themselves word of faith. They're not, they're not anymore. And churches even change their names because they used to be word of faith and they're not anymore. But I read in my Bible that the Holy Spirit said the word of faith which we preach. Yeah. So if it's not the word of faith, uh, I'd question what it is. <laughs> now, everything in the Bible isn't about faith. There's a lot of things in the Bible that we can share, we can study together, I can teach on and preach on that you, 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 you might say uh, that that sure didn't increase my faith. That sure didn't increase my faith. Well, that, that shows up uh, some ignorance about Christianity in you, that, that faith is just something that you accrue and something you accumulate so that you can use it to get things. That's not what faith is at all. That's not what faith is at all. And 
Some, some have taken to just study their Bible on one particular arena and one particular area and focus just on that area so their faith would grow in that particular area and then even be critical, and then even be critical about, well, why don't you preach more on, on faith? Or why doesn't your preaching strengthen our faith more? But I find right here in the Bible that not everything is geared to faith. Because it says right there, it's faith and good doctrine. Faith and good doctrine. And there are things that, I mean, we could preach, we could just take one verse. One verse, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Only that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. There's a lot in that verse. A lot in that verse. And you could go away and say, well, that didn't help my faith to get a new car. Well, that didn't help my faith to get a new house. Well, that didn't help my faith to get a promotion at work. Well, that didn't help my faith to get healing. Well, that didn't help my faith for the miracle that I need. Well, that didn't help my faith for joy. Well, that didn't help my faith for strength. What was it? Good doctrine. Good doctrine. Good doctrine is let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Only that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Okay? okay. Uh, we, we can just stand up and, and, and just share. Uh, I remember D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody started out just like everybody else. Young and knowing nothing. Young preacher. I mean young. And, and the first church he ever went to, uh, there was an old time pastor there, and 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 he said, "So I, I hear you're a you're a you're a preacher." He said, "Well, I'm aspiring to be." He said, "Well, quit aspiring and get to preaching." <laughs> so well, I don't have anywhere to preach. He said, "Preach in my church. You'll start tomorrow morning." That was a Sunday morning. He said, "Well, my schedule is free." <laughs> he said, "I also want you to preach tomorrow night." Sunday night. He said, I also want you to preach Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. I'll be home on that Saturday. I want you to preach in my church every service for two weeks. He said, okay, I'll do it. He preached for 15, 16 services in a row on John 3.16. John 3.16. That preacher came back on Saturday and said, what's the young preacher been preaching on? The elder said, John 3.16. He said, is that all? He said, preaches at every service. Just preaches at every service. So he came, sat down. He says, the best service he'd ever heard on John 3.16. Now, you could say, well, I don't need to go back to that service because I don't need faith to get saved. I got saved the first service. I heard John 3.16, faith rose in my heart. I exchanged faith for salvation. I understood God's grace. I reached up by faith and took it. And so I don't need to hear it again. Why not? It's good doctrine. That's right. Amen. Why don't you need to hear the, the, the Pentecostal message of the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost that, that they were all in one accord in one place and, uh, the, and the day of Pentecost had fully come and, and they were all in one accord in one place and suddenly there was a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. That's good doctrine. Amen. I said it's good doctrine. Amen. 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 So, so we can't get uh, just, just so limited in the Bible to say, well, if it's not about one subject or another subject or another subject, uh, there's a lot of subjects in the Bible. There's a lot of truth in the Bible. And the Bible says if you'll put the brethren in remembrance of these things, not, not, not baffle them with something new every service, put in remembrance. The strength of teaching is repetition and faith doesn't come by having heard it once several years ago. Faith comes even by having heard and having heard and having heard and having heard. But refuse and bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto how many things? All things. How many? All. all things. Godliness is profitable unto all things. Having promise of the life that now is and 
that which is to come. And I love verse 9. I love verse 9. You have, you have there verse, verse 8, uh, and, and of course, we look at it, and we, we nod our head, uh, and, and we, we generally put ourselves in agreement with it uh, and, and, and acknowledge it. But the Bible says this is a faithful saying. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. A faithful saying. Uh, what are some of, the, some of the synonyms for faithful? If you look that verse up in a number of other translations, you'll find that most translations say trustworthy. That saying is worthy of your trust. Trustworthy. One translation says sure and certain. It's sure and certain. It's faithful. It's, one translation says, reliable. One translation says, it's dependable. That is one dependable statement. You can depend on that statement. You can rely on that statement. It is worthy of your trust. It is a trustworthy statement. What statement? That godliness is profitable in the life that now is and in the life that is to come. And we can't get our focus on one to the neglect of the other any more than we can get our focus on the other to the neglect of one. Now, I, I, I've shared with you my testimony. I know some other people's testimony, but I know mine the best. And I grew up in church, and, and uh, a couple of you have given me a book by T.S. Linscott called The Path of Wealth. I mentioned it once. Uh, I heard Reverend Tony Cook quote out of it in August of 1985. And he quoted out of it, and, and so I, I went back. We had a cassette tape player. Remember those? Little, little, little cassette deck, they called them. And I got those tapes, and, and I was, I was so, so moved by that quote, uh, I would run it for like four seconds, and then I would write down what it said. And then I'd start it, but I'd miss a word, because it would be like that. And, 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 and so I'd have to run it all the way back. And I don't know how many hours it took me to get that whole quote, but I had it all written down. I still have it in my Bible. It is a powerful, the spirit of prophecy came on that man, and he began to prophesy about the tithe. About the tithe. About the secret to all of God's financial plan being the tithe. And, and in the midst of that, in the midst of, of what was truly uh, a, a prophetically anointed utterance for the church, the body of Christ. In the midst of that, Mr. Linscott talks about many preachers today put off and spiritualize and vaporize all of the present tense blessings of the Bible and put them off to a future time in the sweet by and by. And, 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 and I remember hearing that and thinking, that's, that's where I came from. That's what I was raised in. That you, you got saved, you went forward at a crusade or a tent meeting, you went forward in a church service. Maybe you prayed on your own, but most of the time, you know, at the end of service, I mean, there was always an anointing on it. Man, when they start playing just as I am at a Billy Graham crusade, I don't care how many times you've been saved, you want to get saved again <laughs> and go back down there. Lowell Lundstrom crusades, uh, uh, Oral Roberts crusades, and people just go by the droves. And then you get saved uh, and, and, and not so much, you know, those that I mentioned, but, but, uh, but most Christians would pray that prayer and then the rest of their doctrine was hold out to the end and go to heaven when you die. I mean, it's still part of our doctrine. We don't even think about it. We pray the sinner's prayer with people, and then we tell them, now you're going to go to heaven when you die. Instead of something biblical like, now you're a part of the body of Christ. Now you're part of the group that is going to change the world. Now you're a world shaker. Now you're going to change your school and change your business place. And you're going to change the landscape of your, your neighborhood because you're the light of the world now. Now you're the salt of the earth and you're going to season everything and you're going to flavor everything around you. And you're going to be too salty for some people. 
and they're not going to like it. They're going to persecute you for it, but that's okay because they persecuted Jesus. They persecute all the followers of Jesus. Blessed are those that are persecuted for righteousness sake, for great is the their reward in the kingdom of God. Let them rejoice and be exceedingly glad for so persecuted they, the prophets. See, we don't tell them that. We, do, we just say, okay, now you're going to heaven when you die and, and, and you just leave the altar. And, yeah, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. But, but, but at least I know I'm going to heaven when I die. And I still have all the struggles and all the battles and all the warfare and, and it's all designed to keep me quiet and keep me in, in, in constant, constant uh, state of war uh, so that I can't really ever take any ground and be on the offense because I'm constantly on the defense. It was, a, it was a total revelation to me that there were, there were more blessings that the Bible tells me about in this lifetime than there are in the life which is to come. I, I realize the life which is to come is going to be far better than anything we've ever experienced here. But you do not have to live with your nose to the grindstone, fighting and battling and scratching and clawing and barely making it. There are blessings to being a godly woman, godly man, godly church. There, there are blessings in the life that now is blessings in the life which now is and put them on a list beside go to heaven and go to heaven still looks better but the list is a whole lot longer in the life which now is in the life that now is and I'm like the old time preacher who said I don't need any, need something in the sweet by and by God will take care of that himself listen there'll be no devil there I need authority here I need the armor of God working for me here I don't need it there There'll be no weakness there. So I need praying in the spirit that builds me up here. Not, 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 not there. I need the Lord as the strength of my life and I'm more than a conqueror. I need that right here. I won't need that there. I, I, I don't see that anyone will need physical healing once we cross over. No, there'll be no more sickness, no more disease, no more pain. The former things are passed away. So I need that. I need that right here. But, but because of ignorance, ignorance, I'm just going to quiz, quiz my bride here. In the church you were raised in and grew up in, uh, how many messages do you think uh, in 17 years before we met, how many messages on healing did you ever hear? Three? Oh, she had her fingers up like this. You're saying zero. Zero, none, not even one. How many times in the church that we met in, that we, uh, we, we attended seven years together, how many times did they take oil out and anoint people with oil for physical healing? And I don't know if they do it today or not. I've, I've never, never asked anybody from there, but, but never even one time. How many times, because Mark 16, 18 says, these signs shall follow them that believe, and one of them is they'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's right. And so how many times, see, and then we were told, well, that's spiritual healing. There's no such thing. That's right. Amen. It's never found in the Bible. Not even one time is that phrase found in the Bible. And your spirit doesn't need to be healed. It needs to be born again. Amen. It needs to be recreated. You need to become a new creature in Christ. And, and, and that healing, Jesus must have got mixed up because he went about doing good and healing. And his healing was blind eyes, deaf ears, people that couldn't walk, arthritis, stiff joints. That, that was the healing that he did. Couldn't talk, and, and he healed every manner of sickness and every manner of disease among the people because, to fulfill, it says in Matthew chapter 8, to fulfill Isaiah chapter 53, he bore our infirmities and carried our pains. And so as wonderful as heaven is, we still need to be guarded. We still turn over to the book of Jude with me. Hold your place there. Hold your place in 1 Timothy and turn over to the book of Jude. Jude's only got one chapter. And it's right before the book of Revelation. So go to the end of your Bible, find Revelation, and then just turn ahead just one book. Turn ahead just one, one book, and you'll find the book of Jude, uh, only one chapter, only one chapter. And it says in, in verse 3, Jude 
Verse 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write to you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write to you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Uh, and, and, and so we've, we've found ourselves earnestly contending for the faith because that faith will be deteriorated. It'll be deteriorated until there are no physical blessings, there are no present tense blessings, there are no blessings in this lifetime, and, and, that, and that, comes on, that comes on quicker than you think. And, and everything is put off. Everything is put off to off in yonder future. Uh, 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 if, I, if, if I were a devil, I think I'd try to propagate that lie. He won't be an off in yonder future. He'll be burning in the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Yeah. Amen. So, so we, 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 we need to uh, look at, at the Bible, not, not current modern day teaching, even if we were raised in it, that puts off the present tense blessing of God to sometime in the future. Uh, sometime in the future is right now. Yes. Sometime, I said sometime in the future is today. Yes. It's right now. It's like the church who was candidating pastors. And, and, and <clears throat> first week, the pastoral search committee had a, had a young, aspiring young preacher. And he came in and the person that introduced him said, he has a, he has a glorious future ahead of him. And he got up and preached. And the second week, uh, the pastoral search committee had a second candidate in and he came up and before he was introduced, he was retired uh, quite a number of years. And he said, he has a glorious past. And, and <clears throat> that week at the board meeting, the, the, one of the people on the board looked at the pastoral search committee and said, listen, you've had somebody here that had a glorious past. You've had somebody here that's had a glorious future. We need somebody that's got something right now. <laughs> It's wonderful what Jesus did when he walked up and down the shores of Galilee. But if you're not careful, you'll read that as history and you'll say, what a wonderful time. And I sure wish I'd have been there walking up and down those shores, seeing all those blind eyes open, seeing all those deaf ears, watching him walk on water. And, and you'll, you'll, you'll have this Christian mentality of I should have been here because in the past it was wonderful. Or just wait till the millennium. I mean, it'll be so great. There'll be no devil. There'll be no demons. I mean, Jesus set up his kingdom in Jerusalem. It's going to be so wonderful in heaven. I mean, the glory is 10,000 times 10,000 and all the angels and no more curse, no more death, no more sighing, crying or dying. In the future, it's going to be wonderful. But what about right now? I said, but what about right now? See, the, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who doesn't get enough press time, uh, uh, he, he's here right now. He, he's not. He's not waiting. He's not waiting. And, and he wasn't here back then. And 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 of course, even that's been messed up and loused up. Well, that was just for the early church. Like the Holy Spirit hasn't been doing anything since. Well, that was only till the last of the original apostles died. And what's he been doing since? The apostles didn't do it anyway. And the early church didn't do it anyway. It was the Holy Spirit, and He's still here. Amen. He's still here confirming the Word with signs following. Amen. Confirming the Word. And so if there are no signs, it's because there is no Word, Amen. or there's too much tradition. Yeah. Matthew 7 says, because of tradition, the Word of God is ineffective. Yeah. So you can have the Word, but, but if you've got tradition, the traditions of men, like, well, God doesn't do that anymore, well, well, certainly, certainly uh, God raised the dead on a couple of occasions, but he doesn't do that kind of stuff anymore. Who says? Who said? No, God hasn't changed and his word hasn't changed and God the Spirit hasn't changed. God the Son hasn't changed. God the Father hasn't changed. Now, this verse says, bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable unto all things having promised in the life which now is and that which is to come. Uh, this, this verse in, in a number of other translations, uh, I like this translation, it says, physical training is of some value, but godliness has value in all things, holding promise for both the present life 
and the life to come. This translation says, physical healing is good, but training for godliness is much better. <laughs> Promising benefits in this lifetime. Don't you like that? Promising benefits in this lifetime and in the life to come. And, and, and so those two translations say that, that godliness has value. Godliness is much better. Here's one that says godliness is beneficial. The, the New American Standard Bible says godliness is profitable. The Good News Translation said it's valuable. It's valuable, it's profitable, it has value, it's much better, it's beneficial. It's beneficial. Okay, now here, here's, here's the final translation. Uh, it, it says, uh, but reject reverent, excuse me, but reject irreverent silly myths. Instead, train yourself for godliness, for physical exercise is of limited value. But godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise for the present life and for the one that is to come. That's the Berean Study Bible. And, and so different translations use, of course, different words, but, but all of them have, have very, very similar, very similar messages, and that is that there are promises and benefits, and it's profitable in this life that now is, as well as in the life which is to come, in the life which is to come. And so, so if, we, if we take a look at that, and then he says, this is a true saying, this is a, 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 a true saying and worth accepting. This is a true saying and it's worth accepting. So let's, let's finish up our time tonight and, and let's just look at, look at a few verses uh, that, that promise us things in this lifetime. Promise that, that benefit us in this lifetime. Let's start in the Gospels and we'll read some of the words of Red. All right, Let, let's look at the end of the book of Luke. Luke is the, the third gospel. And, and uh, praise God for the book of Luke. Amen. Now, now, of course, we could go back, we could read any of these words uh, of Jesus. Uh, in Matthew, he said, Go and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. Now, Jesus said that. <laughs> Come on. It's in red. Yes. And he said, go make disciples of every nation and teach them everything I've taught you. Yes. Yes. Must be for us today, yes. these words of red that he taught them. You know what? I'm, I'm, reading, from, I'm reading from the B.I. B-L-E, yes, that's a book for me, and, and it's from Matthew 28 and verse 20. Put it up on the screen if you would, please. Matthew 28, 20, this is what Jesus said for his disciples. Are you one? Yes. I'm one, how about you? Yeah, and he said to them, he said, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I've commanded you. Pretty clear, isn't it? Crystal, right? Yeah, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. That's a pretty good promise. Yes. I'm with you always, even to, till you get off this rock, to, 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 to the end of it. I'm going to be with you. Amen. I'm going to be with you. Hallelujah. And so uh, I hope you enjoy being spirit filled here, because if you, if you go on before the, the, what we call the rapture, the catching away, <coughs> uh, he's not going to be up there. He's here. He's here. God the Father and Jesus, you'll have a great time with the angels, but the Holy Spirit's here. And he's going to be here until we're all caught away. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Well, let's see what Mark has to say in his gospel then. He says in verse 17, And these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. <laughs> they'll speak with new tongues. He must have been talking about us. It, it, nobody did until the day of Pentecost. So that looks like those words in red are for me. Yeah, they'll take up serpents or drink deadly things and not be hurt. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And they shall recover. 
I'm going to get over to uh, the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, and he says in verse 49, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But wait, tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Endued with power from on high. And in Acts then, we have the continuation of the book of Luke. Oh, I can't miss John, can I? I, I, I mean... Let's stop, in, let's stop in the uh, 14th chapter of the book of John. I wonder who Jesus is talking to here. He says in verse 12, Verily I say unto you, that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works, because I go to the Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter who will abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, and he dwells with you and shall be in you. I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll come to you. Hallelujah. Words in yeah. red. Verse 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he'll teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. Praise the Lord. I like the Gospels, thank you. I think I'll just keep living in them. How about you? <laughs> All right, let's, now we can go over to Acts chapter 1, where he told those people to wait. The only place in the Bible where it said to wait, there was no other group of people ever addressed except the people who originally on the day of Pentecost were filled. No one else anywhere was ever told to wait. That's right. That's no one else anywhere was ever, ever told to tarry. We can look at every example of people being filled with the Holy Spirit. Not one time was there ever one person who wanted to be that was told it's not God's will for you. Not one time did it ever say anywhere in the Bible, that's only for the early church. Not one time in the whole Bible did it say it's just for a select few. Amen. Never. Never. But he told these people, wait, because the day of Pentecost hadn't fully come yet. And, and when it did, he, he, he said, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get baptized with the Holy Spirit. You're going to get baptized with the Holy Spirit. I'll never forget the day that I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, praise God, in, in August of 1983. And, and I, I mean, it was just like God did something for me. I mean, beyond salvation, because I'd always been taught that. And of course, if there's only one thing, I mean, if you're the thief on the cross, you want to hear one message. Uh, and it's not, it's not God wants you to prosper and be in health. And if you're in your deathbed, you, you got your, your last breath is coming and going. I mean, you, 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 better, you better get ready to meet your maker. Uh, you want to go to heaven and not to hell, uh, then, then, then you better pray and accept Jesus Christ and what he did for you and mean it. Sure, that's, that's, that's the greatest message, but I'm looking around. I don't see a cross and I don't see one person hanging on it. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, I got saved as a nine-year-old boy. And other than the things that, that he did just because he's God, like his presence was always with me. And, and I'm sure he, he, he kept me out of some, you know, some deathly uh, situations and, and, and bailed me out of some things. And he was blessing me in, in all my blessed ignorance. He was still blessing me. But I really didn't expect the Lord to do even one thing for me. I didn't really expect him. I mean, I'd kind of beg him once in a while and say, Lord, if it be thy will. Not really sure if you're listening to somebody like me, but here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. You know, I, I just didn't know anything. And then all of a sudden, heaven opened up. And, 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 and I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, and I thought, God is real, and God still moves today, and God is still doing things in people's lives. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. I, I, I went out just, just maybe, maybe two days after I'd been filled with the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues. And, and I was farming with my dad, who didn't believe any of it, said it was all of the devil. Not, not, not now. 
Not now. My dad's a tongue talker. He's a devil chaser. He's a Bible thumper. He's a scripture quoter. He, he's a full blown Holy Ghost man now, my dad is. But, but it was about maybe, maybe a day or two after. And I mean, I was just, you know, you don't even, you don't, your, foot, your feet don't even touch the ground. You just, I almost feel sorry for some of you that are born into Pentecostal church and born into Pentecostal family. You don't know what it's like to be saved and just be hanging on for dear life every day, just trying to make it one more day, hoping with everything in you the rapture takes place so you don't have to face one more day. The devil just kicking your backside and, and, and you're ignorant and you can't do anything about it and, and, and you can't pray in the spirit so you just don't know what to pray. That's what Romans said. It's true. You just don't. And, and I got out uh, a couple days after. I mean, God. I mean, God's everywhere. Everything is God. And, 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 and we had a sliding door at the end of the barn. And, you know, sometimes you got to pull on the dumb thing. It's like seven feet tall and eight feet wide. Big door, big heavy door. And I gave it a big old tug and it just went, <laughs> and my hand got caught right in the, in the end of it. I mean to tell you, just mashed my hand, just bam, like that. And, and I knew I mean, it's broke, it's blood that's going to start swelling up. I just opened that door. I just stood right at the end of that barn. I just held it up and said, Lord, will you just please heal that right now? Just like that it was healed. Never had any pain in it. Never had, never had a bruise. Never had a red mark. Never had anything. I didn't even time to think about it. Did you see that massive display of faith that I just exercised? I didn't even think about it. It was just as normal. It was just as natural. It was just, it was just, it was just, it was just, it was just would, would you please, thank you, thank you. And I just went back to work. Not, not even a red mark. No bruising, not, no, just, just, just healed, just like that. I mean, for a second. It hurt so bad. There were tears in my eyes. And I just I said, Lord, Lord, and bang, done. Bang, done. Just like that. Just like that. Now, it don't always come that fast anymore. Oh, how I wish it did. Every once in a while, I take myself by the ear and I pull myself back over to the closet and say, get back to that childlike faith. It doesn't get all caught up with all the doctrinal arguing and bickering and just love God. Yes. Just trust him. Yes. Just put yourself, just throw yourself over there and just, just realize yes. you don't have to prove everything with seven scriptures and get in an argument with half the town and <laughs> listen to every email that comes and, and just, just love God and just trust him and just, just let him do what he wants to do worse than you want him to do it. Whoa. The present tense blessings of God we're about done, include, include the baptism with the Holy Spirit. That's why it's not just in Acts chapter 2. That's why it's not just amongst the Jews. That's why Philip, when he went down in Acts chapter 8, and he preached Christ to them, and they all got saved and baptized, then they called for Peter and John to come down and pray for him to receive the infilling with the Holy Spirit, and they laid hands on him for it. And then that's why in Acts chapter 10, Peter's up there preaching to Cornelius' household. He doesn't have an altar call. He, he, he didn't even know what he's doing there. He didn't even think that <laughs> Gentiles can get saved. And, and, and he, 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 he preaches to them all, and, and the Lord doesn't even wait for him to have an altar call. No. No. He just fills them all with the Holy Spirit, yeah. just boom. Yeah. And they're all speaking in tongues and prophesying, and, and Peter says, well... Uh, what do we do now? And one of them says, we want to get baptized. And he said, well, I, I guess you can. You're obviously saved. You're filled with the Holy Spirit already. Took them all out and baptized them, and all the religious folk had a fit. We skipped over chapter 9, didn't we? Chapter 9 was Saul of Tarsus met Jesus right in the way, and he said, you go have an Ananias, one of the disciples. All the disciples of Jesus, raise your hand. Stream it, raise your hand. Yeah, a disciple, somebody just like you. And the Lord appeared to him and said, uh, there's going to be a man named Saul. He's from Tarsus. He's coming. I want you to lay hands on him. I want you to lay hands on him. He's going to get healed and filled with the Holy Spirit. He's going to serve me. He's going to stand before kings and testify. Ananias said, boy, I've heard a lot about this man. He can throw people in jail. He can have their life. Are you sure about this, Lord? 
The Lord said, you just do what I tell you to do. He's a chosen vessel unto me. I've shown him great things. He must suffer for my name's sake. And, and so he just laid hands on him, and, and boom, his eyes were open. He's filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and, and then in Acts chapter 19, that same man, Paul, Acts chapter 19, the first six verses, he goes and he preaches to some, some Baptists. They'd been baptized. And, and he talks to them, and in verse 6, he lays his hands on them, and they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's a present tense blessing. And, and your Bible says in Jude verse 20 that you can build yourself up by praying in the Holy Ghost. And, and in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4, it says you can edify yourself. That's the same word. It's build yourself up, re-energize yourself, and recharge yourself. And, and you ought to do that every day of your Christian life. So well, I don't even pray in tongues. Well, we can, we, we'll pray for you right here, right now, tonight. Well, how can you say that? How do you know it's the Lord's will? Because godliness is profitable unto all things, including the life which now is and in the life which is to come. And there's nowhere in the Bible that says it's not for you. What part of the Bible isn't for you? Every promise in the Bible, every, every statement of, of fact, like 1 Peter 2.24. 1 Peter 2.24 speaks of the same thing that James 5.14 speaks of, that, that uh, Isaiah 53 prophesied of, that Matthew 8.17 speaks of, uh, that, that, go back to 1 Peter for me, 1 Peter 2.24, that he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness. Now stop, pause. That's a new covenant blessing. <laughs> that, that, that's one of the present tense blessings, right standing with God. Right standing with God. No one, no one in the old covenant, under the old covenant, the Old Testament, no one was declared to be righteous, was justified, had, had it put on their account. It, it was accounted to them, but, uh, but, but righteousness is a new covenant blessing and benefit, and you're right with God today. That, that, that's this lifetime. That's a, the blessing of this lifetime. You can walk through life with assurance of your salvation, know, knowing you can rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Not wonder about it. Not wonder about it. And then the, the rest of that verse... Uh, I, 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 I'm a living testament that healing's for us today, and, and it's for everybody. I listened for a lot and a lot of years that it wasn't for me, and I never was sure because you never know what God's going to do, and, 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 and it's, not, it's not for us today. Well, I found out it was, Amen. and believed God for it and got it, Amen. and have done it many times, many, many times for, with, a lot of, with a lot of folks since. By his stripes, you were healed. Not going to be. Not, not off in the future sometime. That's a New Testament present tense blessing. And, and, and back to righteousness, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians 5, 20, that's a New Testament benefit. That's a benefit of godliness, right standing with God. Yeah, he who knew no sin, God made to be sin for us, that we might be the righteousness of God in him. How about Romans 5, 1? How about Romans 5.1? Peace. Oh, that great thing that, 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 that's called peace. Uh -huh, huh? Yes. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Therefore, being, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Well, here's a, here's a new covenant blessing. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1. Turn over there with me. Hebrews chapter 1. And then we'll go back to the book of John and, and we'll wrap it up there. The life that now is. The life that now is. Praise God. The life that now is. And there are benefits and there's great value to godliness in the life that now is, as well as the life which is to come. Ready? Yes. Hebrews 1. Verse 13, to which of the angels did he say at any time, sit on my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? He did, God didn't say that to angels. He said that to his son. I said he said that to his son. Are not they all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are heirs of salvation? That, that would be you. That would be you. And the angelic host, the ministering spirits, the angels, 
They're sent forth to minister for you. You're an heir of salvation and bring, and, and, and bring to pass all of the benefits and blessings of the new covenant, which are contained in that one simple word, salvation. Salvation. All right, back to the book of John. And this is our, our last verse or our last verses. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, one of the great blessings uh, in this present, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, we'll go to 14. We'll look at 15. We'll look at 16. Not the whole chapters. Not the whole chapters. And one of the greatest, greatest blessings and benefits we have in the New Testament He's made us members of the church. Made us members of his family and of his body. John chapter, John chapter, John chapter 14. We read this verse a few minutes ago. Verse 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name when he comes, he will teach you. He will teach you. He'll teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever that I have said unto you. Go to the next chapter and look at verse 26 again. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. That, that, that's his ministry. Chapter 16, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He'll not speak of himself Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will glorify me. He will glorify me. Isn't it great to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Praise God. Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, a weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.